Welcome students to the online NPTEL course, uh, Visual Communication Design for Digital Media. This is the first lecture and in this lecture we uh, will uh, uh, discuss about the brief introduction and uh, what will be the overall structure of the course. So uh, here you can uh, see that we will talk about visual communication and uh, that is the uh, subject and we will discuss mainly on the paradigm of digital media. So visual communication is a broader field and it also encompasses uh, any kind of uh, communication um, happens uh, from the any designed object to with the uh, viewer or the user and uh, there can be different uh, paradigms for example it can be a painting, it can be hand painted uh, painting, it can be uh, drama, it can be um, uh, photographs, it can be any 3D object and how people interpret and through visual interpretation and visual uh, perception and uh, a communication happen between uh, the uh, viewer and the design object. So uh, in this complete visual communication domain, we will only uh, talk about the new emerging uh, paradigms of digital media. In uh, digital platform, there are many other um, uh, options in uh, within the digi uh, digital platform itself. So it can be a website, it can be uh, animation and game design, and it can be any uh, graphics generated on digital media, not hand painted, but uh, generated on digital media. And um, it can be anything which uh, we uh, uh, the designers uh, do through digital media and communicate with the user. So uh, let us discuss what is uh, visual communication uh, in a holistic approach. So first uh, visual communication has the first term of visual. So visual can be uh, the design, so it can be graphic design, it can be a painting, it can be photograph, it can be website, web application, it can be animation or game design or any 3D object or 2D object we see around uh, ourselves. It can be even uh, the signages and uh, the pictograms what um, communicates with only um, icons and images and how we uh, interpret and those things are the visual and how they communicate with the user. So there is two factor one is the design and another is the viewer or the user. So the connection between them what are the principles what are the th theories and how we communicate through the uh, visual and how we interpret that is what the visual communication design is. So from design to viewer. So uh, here if we think that there are two things one is the design and another is the viewer. So from a designer's perspective what uh, comes first the design uh, designers first design the thing and then they give it to the uh, 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 then they open this for the audience and then the viewers perceive that. So the com uh, flow uh, goes from design to the user. But if you think about the uh, user's perspective, so users first perceive that and then, then they try finding the meaning of the design. So from the user's perspective, they have their own con uh, contextual learning, they have their past uh, experience of the visual and from that they try to decipher what is the meaning of the visual and then they start understanding the design. So from a uh, user perspective, so it uh, works in the other way. So, in, uh, so it has two process, so process of designing and process of interpretation. For uh, designers, so first process of designing will happen, but that has to be based on the process and understanding of the interpretation. So designer has to know what is the process of interpretation, what is the process, uh, how people uh, think, how people perceive. And but still the process of designing comes first in the uh, designer's end and then uh, the process of in, um, uh, then they uh, leave it to the user and how they interpret. But for the user first they uh, start processing and first they start interpreting and then they understand the what is the design. So there are two things we will discuss in the um, uh, course. So in the process of design, so we need to understand what, what are the elements of design. So uh, with what kind of elements, what are the uh, different elements, there are five basic elements of design, line, shape, texture, we will discuss that. And uh, that will be discussed in module 2 and module 3, we will understand what different elements we have, what are the uh, tools, 
uh, we have to create our design. And these tools are very generic, uh, these tools are generic and these tools can be uh, transformed into uh, animation, these tools can be similar uh, tools, uh, with the similar tools we can uh, design website, we can de uh, design any other things, even the uh, traditional uh, media or the hand painted uh, things has uh, based on the same elements of design. Then, then uh, uh, the principles of design, how we arrange these elements uh, with what kind of theories. And in principles of design, it also it is not just the process of design, it is also de uh, derived from the interpretation, process of interpretation. So, how the user perceive it. So, based on that, we have to arrange all these elements of design into a composition. It can be a just um, 2D composition, it can be, um, it can have a time uh, frame, uh, so, that, so that it uh, becomes a animation or game design. or uh, in, um, or uh, the same process will follow even in the uh, websites. So, these uh, principles we uh, then learn in module number 4 and fi 5. Then there is uh, not just the elements, in elements we have shapes, uh, uh, colors, textures and all these things. We also have some text. So, we need to understand what is typography and what are the different typefaces available. So, when we select the typefaces from the av already available, already designed typefaces, uh, so we need to understand it should match, uh, it should go with the design and what kind of uh, style uh, the type uh, typefaces have, so that we, uh, 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 you can uh, judge what is the, uh, what typefaces suits your design better. And uh, also in sometimes uh, uh, if you are designing logo, if you are designing um, uh, some brand identity for a, um, a company, then you might need to design your own typography. For that also you need to understand uh, what kind of typefaces are available, what are, uh, what are the uh, different fa font families, different kind of uh, 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 different visual styles uh, they uh, convey. So, that based on that we need to uh, incorporate the typefaces into our design. So, understanding of typography is also very important and this will be discussed in module number 7 and 8. Then we come back to the, uh, come to the process of interpretation. So, we designed uh, something, but we need to know how people will perceive that. Other, uh, uh, if we do not have an idea of how people perceive a particular design, our design uh, we might, uh, might think that design will be successful, design can successfully communicate with the user, but there uh, they might some uh, design can be lost in communication. So, we need to understand wh what is the way of communication and how people perceive a visual. So, uh, for that we need to discuss the desi uh, design semiotics. So, semiotics is uh, the perception of signs and symbols. So, we need to understand if we are uh, using some uh, icons, if you are using some um, uh, pictograms, how people will perceive that. That uh, design semiotics is uh, will be discussed in module uh, 9 and 10. Then uh, we will uh, also un, uh, discuss about the holistic composition, how people uh, 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 perceive uh, visual uh, composition holistically, not only with the signages and uh, pictograms, but um, uh, the, um, the meaning of uh, photograph, meaning of uh, the complete composition and how uh, people understand the layout in a, in a total composition with typography, with uh, all the visuals together and how people read. So, here uh, the principles, gestures principles, rule of third, uh, Gutenberg's diagram and all these things will come and that uh, is uh, termed as a visual perception as a module and this module is, uh, uh, they ha there are two modules, 11 and 12 will focus on uh, visual uh, perception and people's interpretation. So, here we have uh, completed the um, uh, mostly uh, the visual uh, communication part. We will uh, discuss about the process of design and we will also discuss about the process of interpretation. So, in pro process of design, we will uh, discuss how to uh, communicate, how, how to design a particular um, uh, domain and we also uh, simultaneously have to know how people uh, interpret that, so that our design becomes much um, more user friendly and communicative with the user. But there is another thing which is uh, like if we, uh, uh, we were discussing uh, about the visual perception 
and semiotics and design principles. So, these things are uh, very generic and these things does not vary based on different people uh, people's perception. Because here uh, the users factor is also there. So, each and every user has different uh, background, different uh, socio-cultural uh, backdrop. So, their perception, their understanding is different and they, uh, they, they, they are pre-programmed with uh, some kind of uh, visuals they have already seen. So, they have their own uh, back, back, socio-cultural background and we call that in uh, the mental model. They have a particular mental model of each and every visual. For, for example, if we uh, try to convey some um, uh, 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 a flower, so it can be a very abstract form of a flower, it can be a very realistic form of a flower, but people uh, who are um, uh, looking at it should be associated with the particular kind of flowers uh, to re recognize that. So, uh, if uh, people um, have recognized about that and people have a different kind of uh, uh, understanding of that, we can even abstract, if, even make it more um, simplistic. Even uh, we can deconstruct the meaning of flower. We can uh, deconstruct the it in terms of elements of design. For example, we can just take the line quality and we can just take the color and um, abstract shape of the flower. And people who understand, who have seen that, uh, can uh, decipher the meaning out of it. So, we will discuss this in the um, in uh, uh, due course of uh, this um, lecture. And uh, so, uh, what we um, were trying to say is uh, like, um, it has a contextual connotation and it is subjective. In that subjectiveness, we uh, will also discuss in the uh, process of uh, interpretation the, uh, in, in visual perception. But more, um, uh, more subjectivity also adds uh, in terms of time. So, some uh, style of design becomes old uh, in due course of time and some style of design uh, becomes uh, new and uh, we follow um, that and some uh, style of design also has some association with the uh, different uh, timeline of the design. So, for that we will uh, discuss the contemporary visual language in design and that will be spread in two module, uh, module number uh, 12 and 13. In this uh, uh, phase, we will talk about how visual style evolves. So, we will discuss from uh, mostly the contemporary visual style, we will not discuss the history of art and design because uh, visual communication design and in digital media is uh, a very new domain and we will only discuss the contemporary phase. We will start with the renaissance and industrial revolution from where we start uh, discussing the contemporary. So, in between that we will have uh, modern uh, modernist movements and postmodern movements of art that time uh, as uh, visual um, di uh, digital me media is a very new thing. So, we also need to understand what uh, happened before uh, the emergence of digital media. Uh, that is a traditional media. In traditional media, what kind of movements, art movements and uh, design movements already happened. So, we will discuss the modernist movements uh, where Bauhaus, the Stigel and Art Novo and all these movements will be discussed and the postmodern pop art and other movements will discuss. And then we will uh, come to the digital media uh, paradigm. So, uh, there we have Apple's uh, design, uh, for example, Apple's design uh, uh, style and Google's material design style. So, we will discuss about the skeuomorphism that is the design style of Apple and uh, iOS platform. And on the other side, we have uh, Google's uh, material design. So, what are the different, uh, different uh, uh, visual uh, qualities they have and how they are different and how they are evolving. So, those things we will um, discuss in this uh, module number 12 and 13. Then uh, we uh, talk about the design paradigm. So, uh, till uh, this phase we were talking in uh, general of uh, uh, in the general terms of visual com uh, communication. Now, we will come to the uh, paradigm of digital media. So, how uh, in digital media paradigm what are the different um, modes of designing, what is the uh, tools and technique because uh, when we talk about a paradigm or a particular platform or particular uh, methodology. So, we need to understand what are the different uh, tools and techniques available because tools and techniques for hand painted uh, visual communication when uh, somebody is painting a poster with a brush on canvas, the tools and techniques are uh, absolutely different and when we are uh, using 
uh, digital media, the tools, the techniques are absolutely different. And they also give us uh, different uh, opportunities to um, uh, design, like uh, for example in uh, brush and uh, canvas, uh, we have to go with the free flow of our design skills. And in uh, digital media, we can also tweak that, we can uh, change the design, we can iterate, and we can. There are uh, some opportunities. Uh, for example, we can have users' opinion. So if the users are liking it, then we can um, go ahead with the design. But uh, if the users are not uh, liking it, so if uh, the communication between the user and the design is somewhere uh, interrupted, we can change the design and we can create multi variate options. So different um, uh, low fidelity prototypes or alpha beta prototy prototypes we can create in digital media and taste and then select the best option or iterate or create a new option which can be uh, better suited for the uh, situation and then launch the design. So we have a lot of other variations. So the methodology is uh, based on the uh, paradigm, the uh, uh, techniques uh, of designing the methodology itself. Uh, is different so that we uh, will start discussing so we have uh, different modes of communication but we are talking about digital uh, paradigm and in digital paradigm we will uh, focus only on um, interaction design web design and graphic design and animation these three are also very different from each other their methodologies are different but similar principles and uh, uh, elements of design and uh, similar concept ha can be followed uh, in interaction design, we will uh, uh, we'll emphasize on the interaction design more and we'll uh, discuss about the what is the process. So how um, in corporate, uh, corporate office, uh, how this uh, process of web design works uh, from inductive or uh, the bottom up approach of uh, design. So from ethnography or doing the user survey, then ideation uh, method and then uh, starting different uh, uh, multivariate uh, low fidelity prototype and how we gradually uh, start uh, proceed towards the final uh, design. So that will be discussed in the interaction design uh, methodology. And then in animation, we will mo uh, mostly focus on the 2D, uh, 2D animation because 3D animation uh, takes a lot of other uh, 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 challenges like uh, uh, modeling that in 3D and uh, other uh, software, uh, 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 learning the software is uh, very important and how to move those uh, characters in, uh, in 3D, those are very important. So we will uh, stick to the three, uh, 2D animations and what are the different processes and what, um, uh, uh, what uh, and with some case examples we will discuss that. And also in graphic design, so graphic design uh, in, uh, to, um, I, I, I mean, uh, steel image and uh, posters we will discuss. So here, uh, in uh, module number six, we will discuss uh, what are the different types of digital media technology available and how this field is emerging and how, um, uh, um, how they are different and uh, that will be discussed and it's a brief introduction about, about the field. Uh, that will be given in module number 6 and then we will uh, proceed uh, further and uh, technology advancement of digital media, what are the different technologies uh, uh, are available and how, what is the future of uh, digital media technology because this technology is a very uh, new uh, technology and still emerging, it is um, changing rapidly, the, even the paradigms within the digi uh, digital media technology is rapidly changing. For example, right now we are, uh, we are uh, seeing uh, digital um, interfaces through laptop, um, desktops and mobile and tabs. But uh, you uh, must have, uh, uh, you, you might be aware about that there are many other uh, uh, emerging trends uh, and techniques are uh, uh, added in this field. For example, augmented reality uh, and uh, vir virtual and mixed realities are also emerging te uh, techniques. So you must have also have, uh, aware about that, um, you must have heard about the uh, Google Glass and um, uh, Microsoft HoloLens, they uh, give us an opportunity to perceive uh, the mixed reality. So we perceive the uh, what we see through our eyes is the uh, uh, physical reality and then uh, in Google Glass and um, Microsoft HoloLens, 
uh, we uh, they uh, have an opportunity to uh, superimpose the digital layer in terms of um, interaction design. So, uh, we have a um, combination of uh, physical reality with the virtual reality. So, what we perceive through a digital uh, media and which does not exist is the virtual reality. In mixed reality, uh, they allow us to uh, perceive the physical reality as well as the uh, virtual reality and um, as a layer on top of the physical reality. For example, uh, the way Google Glass and uh, HoloLens uh, let us perceive. So, in that domain, if it is uh, not a regular display like uh, uh, laptop and tab and mobile, so in that uh, domain also the visual change, uh, change has to be there and some kind of uh, tools and techniques will be different in that media. And even there are also uh, completely virtual reality um, headsets like Oculus Rift and uh, Vive. So, in that we uh, uh, the users are completely cut off, um, uh, gets completely cut off from the physical reality in terms of visual. So, they uh, in those uh, kind of equipments they will uh, uh, give a complete, um, uh, they will uh, imitate the complete uh, three dimensional visual as well as the sound. So, pe uh, people only perceive uh, the uh, uh, virtual reality. So, then we will also uh, discuss um, uh, one by one the me methodology. In the first uh, module number six, uh, 15, we will uh, discuss the generic design methodology, uh, how uh, the inductive process of methodology uh, happens and what are the different methodologies um, are available there and how they evolved uh, through time. So, that will be uh, discussed in module number uh, 15 and from module number 16 to 19 onwards, we will uh, discuss each and every different uh, uh, take, um, uh, di different domains of uh, this digital media. For example, uh, graphic design, interaction or web design and animation, each and every uh, process uh, design methodology will be discussed in uh, different modules. So, in between that also we uh, will give you a software demonstration. So, uh, in interaction uh, design and visual communication or graphic design, it is uh, as it is, it gives us an opportunity to iterate, uh, gives the designer uh, the op opportunity to understand what user perceive and whether the communication is happening. Not only there is uh, just an aesthetic attribute to it, because there is a also a functional attribute, so that the visual should communicate with the user properly. For that, we need to understand whether uh, the communication is happening uh, through what we have designed. So that, uh, for that, we need to understand uh, the uh, user. So, user survey has to be done so that um, uh, we uh, understand our design and then after designing the low fidelity or the initial stage uh, design, we can also have an opportunity to test that with the user whether it is working or not. For that, we have um, some uh, software, some um, uh, tools, some hardware, some uh, software combination to uh, test that. So, eye tracker, you might, uh, might have heard about this. So, eye tracker gives us an opportunity to track uh, user's eye. So, eye tracker is a glass and uh, wearable head mounted eye tracker is uh, uh, we have that in our lab. So, that uh, machine gives us an opportunity to understand where people are looking at and how uh, their eye movements are happening in uh, uh, within the uh, uh, designed uh, display. So, that uh, uh, we will give a demonstration about that and we will understand how people are uh, looking at perceiving your design and from that how we can decipher what iterations are, are required and what um, whether our design is working um, properly and able to communicate with the user or not. So, eye trackers, usability testing and visual analysis demonstration will be given and this is very important for the interaction designers and as well as the graphic designers. So, in graphic designers, uh, graphic design we can find out whether the focal point is acting as a focal point or not, whether people are uh, looking at the focal point and are devoting more time in the focal, uh, focal point or not, whether the figure ground relationship is properly established, whether uh, people are perceiving the figure and um, uh, uh, the uh, ba uh, backdrop is actually acting as a ground or not that we can understand, uh, we can interpret from the people's eye movement. So, that uh, demonstration has um, will be given and also the usability testing for uh, interaction design whether people are following a part particular uh, uh, people are going with the uh, in, um, information architecture whether the information architecture is proper or not that can also be uh, tested with the eye tracker. 
So I would also like to give you some uh, reference books so that you can uh, follow uh, uh, the lectures better. So um, first in the initial stages when we will discuss about the uh, elements and principles of design then you can follow the second book Lawyer and Pentax uh, Design Basics. And then uh, we, uh, when we move to the typography then uh, Alan Lupton's uh, Thinking with Type and Emil Ruder's Typography a man Manual of Design can be followed. And then uh, when we start discussing about uh, the uh, semiotics and semantics theories and visual perception then you um, can uh, con um, consult this book Design of Everyday Things and Emotional Design by Donald Norman. And visual grammar also you can uh, have a look at for understanding uh, visual uh, design principles. And then um, also you have visual ergonomics uh, which uh, will also fit into the visual semiotics and visual perception uh, chapters. And then when we uh, discuss about the new media then we, uh, you can consider uh, this Manovich, Lev Manovich uh, book of uh, language of new media. And then uh, uh, be, uh, Design Basics Index and Design Color Index are the very important books for understanding for the new uh, designers uh, to uh, uh, they, ca they can give you a guideline of what kind of uh, design you uh, are creating. And Steve Krug's uh, Don't Make Me Think is uh, one of the very um, uh, comprehensive book on web design and their usability. So thank you and in the next lecture we will discuss about, uh, we will start with the elements and principles of design, we will start with the elements of design in next two module and we will uh, uh, proceed to the principles of design on the, the further modules. Thank you.